It was once said that of all the unimportant things in the world, sport is the most important. It's critical to billions of people's lives around the world. Their own participation, the love that they have for a particular sport or sports, the amount of time they spend watching. You know, with tremendous passion and joy and seeing their favourite athletes, favourite teams perform or not. It brings people together across all boundaries in life. It's going to be very hard to get past, but the Chinese skater on the outside. Oh, a lot of contact. Stephen Bradbury is going to come through and win gold. As an elite athlete, was to to be the best marathon runner in the world. Games, I had massive aspirations, and uh, and you know did everything that I possibly could, within reason, to to achieve those dreams. in a small country town in northern New South Wales called Mullumbimby and I did every sport just about imaginable under the sun when I was a youngster but uh, I had a natural ability at swimming and it just came easily to me when I was young. I got to compete at the highest level of my sport in swimming and um, you know you gradually sort of rise through the ranks and and get to the international level, and it's a huge thrill to, to represent your country. I started to play football when I was four in a beautiful place called Lismore in the northern rivers of New South Wales, a regional country town where sport is so central to social life. That's how you come to learn about competition and about success and failure and about resilience and overcoming setbacks and injuries and about winning and learning to handle being successful and about losing and learning to handle that as well. They're the lessons that tens of millions of Australians likewise learn. I was fortunate that sport and football gave me then a career and a life. Speed skating was what we did. Uh, my dad was the national champion back in his day. Our family friends were skaters. And for me, as the sport turned into a passion to try to become the best in the world at it, I developed lifelong friendships with my teammates and even some of my rivals. And today, 20 years retired from my sport, many of my closest mates are those that I grew up skating with. Sport was a really big part of my life growing up. I grew up in Geelong in Victoria. My mum was a really sporty person. She was the local lady captain of our golf club. She played netball and basketball and my earliest childhood memories are of sitting on the sidelines, watching my mum play and just wanting to be like her. If you told me when I first started at 24 year, years old, uh, would run at the Olympic Games, two Olympic Games, be the fastest man in the world, be Australia's fastest man, I would have said, well, maybe that's not me. Because to me, it was about living out your passion, living out your dreams and enjoying the process. Australian culture and sport is one and the same. Sport is in our DNA. We love seeing Australian sportsmen and women 
punch above their weight on the global stage. It's a really huge thing to win Australia's first medal in the Winter Olympics and we're all really proud. I think sport sits on a higher pedestal when it comes to integrity than probably anything else in the world. And that's what keeps us all watching it on the TV. The race was won in a world record time by Canadian sprinter Ben Johnson. Absolutely doping was, was out there. He was to be stripped of his medal and record under the shadow of drug use. I, mean, I remember in the New York City Marathon, I finished third and flew back here to Australia and had a, a phone call the next morning after I woke up from a, a newspaper saying, oh, look, New York Roadrunners Club have just put out a media release to say um, one of the first three marathon runners has just tested positive and it wasn't the winner. So that left me and the guy who came, came second. <laughs> it wasn't me, so I, I knew it was the guy who came second. Drugs are out there and cheating is out there. In life, there are always people who are looking for a shortcut, who aren't, aren't um, you know, prepared or, or willing to, to put in the hard work. Sometimes they're the athletes. Um, a lot of the times they're, they're others, you know, they're administrators, they're coaches, they're promoters. Look, as, as an athlete, it is very hard to, I suppose, come to terms that it might not be a, a, a level playing field. At the time, when I was running, uh, there was unfortunately a lot of drugs within track and field, and particularly in the 100 metre sprinting. I've been a, a sports news um, journalist for too many decades, um, covering the big issues in sport. Uh, right around the world, but also covering what some people might call the darker side of sport. Earlier this week, the Court of Arbitration for Sport upheld an appeal by the World Anti-Doping Agency Australian against swimming the Australian Sporting Tribunal's decision fresh allegations of sexual abuse by a coach. Yes, he was disqualified from the women's competition this year after being accused of not using one's best efforts to win. Former Essendon coach James Hurd insists he had no intention to cheat the system Perhaps the most damning revelation from Cricket Australia's internal investigation into the ball tampering saga is that David Warner instructed Cameron Bancroft to use sandpaper to artificially alter the condition of the ball. As more allegations of abuse arise, Australian sport must be judged without fear or favour. The rise of issues like doping, match-fixing, corruption, it's never surprised me because I've never seen sport as separate to the rest of society. You know, there, there are criminals everywhere. There will be people everywhere in every organisation and in every field of life who will try to cheat. There's no reason why sport should be immune from those sorts of things. The government wanted to, to look at sport as an overarching thing and to look at the future and to look at safeguarding, not just sport from criminal elements, but safeguarding future athletes, talking about generations to come, safeguarding our kids because all of these elements play in. It, it was quite forward thinking to understand that sport is not going to shrink in Australia. It's going to continue to grow. So if you don't have your integrity right, and you don't have this level of independence that people can trust in the system, uh, it's fraught. Well, I'm James Wood, and I was the chair of the review committee that looked at sports integrity in 2017, 2018. My background is a, was as a Supreme Court judge, and I was delighted to be asked to chair the review. But by and large, I thought that um, Australian sport was, was pretty good in terms of integrity, but I very quickly became aware from this review that there were threats on the horizon, and we had to have a, a strong response to it. And I did become concerned that there was a real threat coming from organised crime and from, uh, I guess, substance abuse at an, at an organised state level. The illegal offshore betting industry is enormous uh, and it's been very hard to detect people who wanting to use sports betting or otherwise 
for money laundering um, or for financing drug supplies or otherwise. One of the very important things with sports integrity is maintaining the protection of individual participants. And we've all been concerned, I believe, or I'm sure we have all been concerned by the allegations which have arisen of bullying, discrimination, sexual assault, physical assault, in a number of sports where the athletes um, are very much at vulnerable so far as coaches and other people are concerned. It's a multifaceted threat to sports integrity that we have to face. Australia is known as a sporting nation, it's part of our ethos. And uh, to lose a reputation for integrity would be absolutely devastating. One of the things which is absolutely critical for the review was that Australia had the ability to legislate and drive things, which meant they needed to have a national platform. The basic recommendation was the creation of a, a national sports integrity body as, a, as part of the national platform. When we set out to create a national sports integrity agency, we looked around the world to see how other countries were responding to integrity threats. And from this, we tailored a response to suit Australia's needs. We knew the agency needed to be built on partnerships. If we wanted to make a difference, we needed the help of government, anti-doping agencies, law enforcement and intelligence agencies, sporting organisations, media, teachers, educators, researchers, health regulators, and the list goes on. And when we identify a risk in sport, we work with the sport to address it. We work with sport to ensure their integrity frameworks are appropriate. More importantly, we work with sports to develop key education programs and products. Together, we build a stronger, fairer and safer sport. And when I think of partnerships, there's no one more important than our athletes. They're the ones we're trying to protect. Without athletes, there is no sport. One of the first things we did as an agency was establish an athlete advisory group. The role of this group continues to evolve, but their influence on Sport Integrity Australia and sport integrity generally is critical. As we opened the doors of Sport Integrity Australia in 2020, the world was confronted with the Athlete A documentary detailing abuse in US gymnastics. The impact was felt around the world and here in Australia. Sport and government were on notice. Change was on the way. The National Integrity Framework is a set of streamlined policies that set out what behaviours are acceptable and what behaviours have no place in sport, particularly when it comes to child safeguarding, member protection, competition manipulation, and the use of drugs and medicine. The National Integrity Framework ensures that all sports in Australia have consistent integrity policies. The creation of a, a body like Sport Integrity Australia, I suppose, really alleviates those fears and, and it sets the standards for our national sporting organisations to have integrity policies that meet a certain standard. I think that's a huge step forward for Australian sport. The Wood Review created a spotlight on Australian sport, which is crucial to create innovation but also have a, a good look at how we can do things better in this country. At all levels, it's really bringing together a holistic approach. This system gives athletes the confidence to come forward, to speak up. Athletes are becoming confident their voices will be heard, that their voice will drive change. And what's heartened me the most is the trust placed in us by athletes in the early days of our development. Some have never come forward with stories of abuse or harm. Coming forward to us for the very first time. To date, the response to Sport Integrity Australia has been overwhelming. When we started, we predicted approximately 60 cases a year. We've ended up with over a thousand. We referred over 66 matters to law enforcement, allowing them to deal with the criminal aspects, whilst taking match fixes and child sex offenders out of sport. 
Collectively, we've drawn the line on unacceptable behaviour in sport to make sport fair and safer for this generation and the next. Having the opportunity where athletes, you know, always had a voice, but, you know, an opportunity then to actually talk about it and have recommendations was key. The national framework from Sport Integrity Australia is really important, particularly for, if you like, minority sports or smaller sports that don't have the resources. And it just means that even at grassroots level, where literally tens of millions of Australians experience sport on a, on a regular or semi-regular basis, they all can know that their rights are going to be upheld and therefore we can all just get on with what it's really about and that is just enjoying, you know, the beauty of playing. When you know an organisation is doing their role and providing that safe, fair and honest space, it means that you're not hearing about them because they're taking care of what's required. Uh, for me, that's really the role that Sport Integrity Australia plays. It's, it's so, so important, I think, for, for any, everyone involved in sport to find ways to, to connect the, the, the high performance, the superstars, the champions, with the young kids that are out there in the grassroots community. It's really important that they are the, the positive, inspiring role models that that next generation need. It's about uh, having the courage to pursue your dreams and the, uh, and the talent to, to make those dreams become a reality. Sport is a massive industry and there are so many pathways around it. Being an athlete with a vision impairment has really taught me how to trust and how to be able to let go of fear and the control that perhaps we desire as, as individuals. Sport matters now more than ever. Many of our kids are trading time, training or competing in sports for sitting at home in their bedroom looking at a screen or playing on social media. Now, sport brings communities together. It's positive and it creates healthy bodies, healthy minds that reduce impact on the health system later in life. Sport transcends, you know, religion, culture, race, regions, countries, but if you look at sport, it's interwoven into our communities and our families. You can be anywhere in this country to have an opportunity to go to the Olympic Games or be the best, but it is about opportunities. We have different religions, we come from different nations, we have different backgrounds, we eat different food, we have different languages, we have different life experiences, we're different ages and we're different genders, and we're different sexualities, like everything. It's totally different. But we wear the same shirt, we cheer for the same players, and we experience sport in the same way, through joy and passion or pain, heartache. That's the, the real power of sport is that it's, it's a central safe zone that allows all of humanity to come together. You can genuinely be treated as equal. Sport should be fun and to me that means it's, it's both a safe environment and a fair environment. The role that Sport Integrity Australia is playing now, um, you know, it's one of the, the first organisations in the world to have all the integrity functions under one roof. Uh, it's, been, it's been fantastic and you know, I think it sets a real example for other, other countries around the world. Sport is powerful, not just in an Australian context, but globally. Sport unifies and builds communities. Sport's at the heart of our culture. We need to protect it together. <laughs>